Hello YouTube, Wycliffe Barrett here. Uh, today I'm going to show you something really absolutely breathtaking. This is Xpilot. Now Xpilot is the new pilot client for Xplane and uh, I've, been I've been given permission by the developers to do this even though it is in beta. It is in late beta. Uh, it's uh, imminent release is it's like just around the corner the release of it is just around the corner now uh, i've been a, a beta tester for this uh, for the last few weeks and i have to say that it, uh, it it is brilliant especially when used with the new voice codec uh, which is uh, audio for vatsim and um, i've been assured that both of these things are going to be released soon and um, that i mean i don't know so Please don't send me messages and say, oh, when's it coming? I don't know, okay? I'll be perfectly upfront about that. Now, uh, let's assume that you've downloaded it. Uh, it's a simple download. It, it has an installer, so it does everything for you, so to speak. And unlike Swift, Xpilot is a plugin. Swift was a standalone program that you could install somewhere else on your computer, and it would link to Xplane. Xpilot is a plugin, okay, plain and simple. So you download it and you run the installer, but what you need to do once it's installed, what you need to do first of all is make sure that you point um, Xpilot to your CSL folder. And I'm going to show you where that is now, okay? So obviously uh, it's uh, Xplain, Xplain 11, uh, resources, hang on, where are we? Resources, plugins. Xpilot resources CSL. Okay, so there we are. Uh, that's my CSL folder, which is um, the XCSL folder. You can use uh, Bluebell objects or you can use XCSL folder, whatever you want. Uh, but you must make sure it goes in the right place there, which is uh, plugins, resources, uh, Xpilot resources CSL. All right, so once you've done that, okay. So you put, you put your CSL, it's installed, and you put your CSL in there, and you run it. And uh, I can't quite remember whether when you install it, it comes up with the settings screen first or this screen. But that doesn't matter, because um, what you can do is you go, if it, if it comes up with this screen first, you just go into the settings screen. If the settings screen comes up first, boom, it doesn't really matter, okay? Now you can see that... Uh, it's, it's trying to connect to Xplane. It says Xplane connection failed, and that is because I haven't got Xplane running. Okay, there's no point because um, at the moment Xpilot only connects to the test server for uh, audio for VATSIM, it doesn't connect to the normal VATSIM network servers. Okay, so. Uh, you know, there's no point in trying to find it or download it or anything. You can only get it if you're in the te in the uh, beta testing team, which is a large team, by the way, of people all over the world. I've been to the Philippines, the UK, and America. Anyway, here's the settings screen. It's quite straightforward. You put in your name, uh, your VATSIM ID, your name, your uh, home airport and then uh, your server. Obviously I'm in the UK so I choose UK1. Then underneath that you've got um, uh, uh, the opportunity to hide um, hide the screen. You can put it on a hotkey so that you can hide Xpilot. I've got a second monitor uh, so I just put mine over on the second monitor. If you've got a single monitor you can set a toggle key whereby it'll set then in this section here, there are a number of things which are to do with notifications that will appear on your taskbar. So, you know, you, I've, I've kicked, ticked all of those. The next section down is um, to do with uh, miscellaneous uh, aspects of uh, Xpilot. And not an awful lot to worry about there, but uh, I've left the top one unticked and then the next three ticked because I, I would like those things. What you can't do is, one says uh, squawk, squawk Charlie automatically, it, uh, it, that doesn't work. You have to squawk Charlie in the aircraft. And the other one says uh, automatic ident, you can't. You have to ident in the aircraft using the radios in the aircraft, unfortunately. Coming over then, of course, you've got uh, your audio uh, settings. So basically you choose you know, what uh, headset you've got or what um, microphone you've got. Uh, and then to set the volume, it's straightforward. 
Yeah, I mean, there's none of this testing where you've got to see what your background noise is or anything like that. You just you just adjust the volume. So the output volume, that's what you actually hear. You can turn up and your mic volume. And what, what they want is for you to keep your voice in the green bar. So you can see the bar moving up and down as I'm talking there. Um, and basically what you have to do is make sure that your voice doesn't go into the red but stays in the green so you just adjust the slider to stay in the green and that is it there's none of this testing you know speak for five seconds and we'll play it back and all this that and the other uh, it's just straightforward it's so simple and then the final button on, on, on the bottom there is setting a PTT key which is pretty remarkable that you know uh, all you do is you just click the button and then press whatever button or key you want to use for your PTT. You can use a key or a button on your on your um, joystick um, by doing that. And uh, I, I've used a button on my joystick, and you'll I'll, I'll I'll set that in a moment. I'm just check just sorting out my voice level because um, using my Bluebell mic, I have to put the voice level up higher than my headset. With my headset, it's actually below 50%, and with my Bluebell, it's above. But anyway, we'll, we'll leave it there, uh, so apply that. Now, as I say, setting PTT is absolutely really straightforward. I, I'm going to clear mine uh, so you can see me actually set it, but as I say, you can set either a button or a button on your joystick or a key on the keyboard. Um, I think most people will set a key, right, a button on the joystick. There we go. So I'm going to press the button now. Boom. There we go. It's button 7 on my uh, X52, SciTech X52. And it even identifies the flight controller that I've got. So that's all the settings, which you could do literally in, in, a, in, in less than a minute if you really wanted to. So coming back out, here we have X-Pilot. Obviously, as I say, we're not connected to anything. But if we were, on the left-hand side here, uh, you would see... The controllers that are on online or nearby because the way that x pilot works and audio for vatsim is that as you move away from one uh, area and come into range of another one you'll see that you'll see the controllers going off and on which is like any any other software we've had uh, but that expands that you know as the controllers come on the window will expand and you could see that you know i dragged it down there as well uh, and really, that's it. You know, it's really straightforward. Up at the top there, uh, you connect and it puts in, you know, your, your aircraft. Uh, I think I'm WestJet 2302 because I was flying in Boston. But if you click on the button, it shows you all your previous call signs. And you can see that I was also Speedbird 2302 the other day uh, when I was in the UK. Uh, but last night at Boston, I was west yet. I thought I'd keep it real and not fly. Um, although I could fly uh, British Airways into Boston. I'm pretty sure they do fly to Boston International. Um, moving along across the top, then you've got iDent. Uh, and as I say, it, you can click that button from standby to Charlie mode, but it, it doesn't work. You have to physically do it on the radio in the, uh, in the cockpit. So, all very straightforward. Then there's flight plan, of course, uh, which you can see here. I had a flight plan in uh, from uh, KBOS to KBDL. Uh, and it's everything you know. You, know you, you, you put in your flight plan. You put something in your remarks. I put in my re remarks. Uh, UK pilots, please speak slower than normal. Uh, American controllers are well known for speaking fast. Uh, but th there we are, and, and and that is it. It is simple. It it works. It works very very well, and it is completely it is easy to use. It's simple. It, in many ways, it's like X Squat Box uh, in simplicity, but it's in it's on steroids. Oh, and the thing about aircraft floating above the ground or sinking into the ground, you know, with just fins going along the tarmac, that doesn't happen anymore. It's all dealt with within the program. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to load vertical offset files in or anything like that. It's all done within uh, XPilot. And like I say, you can move it onto another screen or move it anywhere you want. Uh, absolutely superb.
uh, there you have it as i say it is due to come out very very soon i'm not quite sure when uh, and even if i knew i wouldn't tell you because uh, we're on under ndas in that respect uh, but i don't know but i have been assured that it's very soon um and everybody at vatsim is incredibly pleased with this um, swift took over seven years to develop um and they got hamstrung by all sorts of things, NDAs and whatnot. Uh, Xpilot has been developed in a matter of months, uh, literally a matter of months, um, uh, because the guys who developed this, they just refused to put Swift on their machines when they saw it. Anyway, I hope you found the uh, video useful. You can look forward to this, and you can look forward to uh, audio for Vatsim, which is absolutely superb, crystal clear. Um, very, very, very soon. As always, my name is Wycliffe Barrett. Please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Hit the like button. Don't forget, hit the bell. Uh, get the bell on so you'll be notified of when my videos go live. And um, please, please, please subscribe. Uh, it's the only way that this channel can keep going is through subscribers and likes. Uh, let's get a good number of likes on this video. And we'll see you all soon. Take care now and uh, blue skies. Cheerio.